and good evening. And welcome once again to Happenings at the Center. As you're probably aware from viewing our programs on a monthly basis, I have the opportunity of sitting with the director of Council on the Aging, Roberto Lynch. We go over a number of things relative to happenings at the center. So without further ado, well, once again, I want to welcome the director of Council on the Aging, Roberta Lynch. Roberta? Hi, Jack. How are you? Fine. Good. Good. How do you like the weather? You want my personal observation <laughs> or should I lie a little? Oh, my it's goodness. It's cold. It's cold. We've had enough snow, haven't we? Oh, we have. We have, yes. You know, I find, Roberta, that a number of people are complaining, just as you said, an awful lot of snow uh, and cold weather. Yeah. Checking the national weather, uh, we're in for another real cold spell mm -hmm. throughout this week and the beginning of next week. And I'm wondering, well, when is that going to quit? Secondly, um, snow flurries. So. I know. And, you know, it's unfortunate because you do all this planning for programming each month. And uh, February has been a bust for us in terms of uh, what we've planned. We've had to cancel so many activities with the snow. The cold weather really doesn't affect uh, our programming. It's just, you know, attendance is low. People don't want to leave their house. But the snow, we've had to cancel one uh, couple of big events. But one, of course, is our annual Valentine's dance. And this was going to be our seventh Valentine dance. And um, we had to cancel that because we had the snow on that Saturday. Um, and uh, it's, so we've rescheduled it. So instead of a Valentine's dance, it's going to be a spring fling. And we're having that on Saturday, April 5th, the same time, 7 to 10, the same DJ is coming. And uh, so it'll be, a, it'll be a, a fun way to welcome in the spring weather. What's that date again? April 5th, Saturday, April, April 5th. April the yep, 5th. Yep, 7 to 10. Tickets are $12 a person. We always serve you know, crackers, cheese, light hors d'oeuvres, and uh, our friends group brings in the uh, wine and beer. So uh, it's it's a fun time. A lot of a lot of uh, good music, dancing, um, and people have a great time. Well, that's wonderful, Robert. I know that uh, we had talked earlier off camera relative to Valentine's Day <laughs> dance, but it had to be canceled because of the snow. Right. And. How were some of your other activities? Had they been canceled Absolutely. also? Absolutely. We were having a um, ladies' tea on, oh, yeah. on um, February 13th. That had to be canceled also because of snow. And um, that's been rescheduled for Tuesday, March 18th. March 18th? Yes. And uh, so what we did is we extended the invitation to all the ladies who signed up for the February tea. Uh, first, and we'll be going through that list to see if we have extra uh, spots available because we're limited to 40 people for that particular event. Well, I imagine a lot of them would be looking forward to a tea of that nature. As I had said when we talked last, Puritanical Victorian era. Right, and Mrs. Gordon is waiting to come and visit us. You know, we had to cancel her visit in February, but she'll be there on March 18th, and she'll be talking to uh, the ladies about proper etiquette, and uh, so it should be very interesting. Should be, and yes. that date again? That is uh, Tuesday, March 18th. You know, I have an idea. Relative to the dance mm -hmm. and relative to the tea, uh, I think it would be a very wise idea if we put that on the bulletin board. Oh, that would be great. Uh, that would that be great. way, so that to uh, remind people that right. uh, it is, oh, it's canceled, so we yes. can't. Now, it's going to be on the... April 5th. April 5th. Uh, for the dance and March 18th for our tea. Yeah. So I think we should put that on the bulletin board. Yeah. Well, well we let's... Go we, ahead. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. But we have some pretty good activities, I think, scheduled for March. Um, and one sort of picks up on the little um, blurb I wrote about driving and 
evaluating where you are with your driving um, in the February newsletter. And we have our breakfast. Joe Canavan from Triad will be there. And that is uh, Thursday, March 6th. March 6th is the breakfast. Is the breakfast, yep. We serve at 8.30, pancakes, bacon, sausage, fruit, and coffee, juice, that sort of thing. We ask for a $3 donation for breakfast, but the, the real benefit to this breakfast is we always have a speaker, and in March we have Michelle Ellix coming from the Registry of Motor Vehicles to talk about uh, safe driving, um, how to get your uh, handicap placard from the RMV, and just little details about driving as we age and she has been with us a couple years ago she gave she gives a great talk on driving so um, that's open for anyone it's sort of a drop in we ask people to sign up on our clipboards but um, you know there's no limit of course to people coming in for breakfast or just come in and listen for the talk if you're not interested in breakfast well you know actually Roberta that that's very very important because if I recall, there was a gentleman from uh, AAA there at one mm -hmm. time that gave a talk relative to driving. Yeah. And today, more than ever before, I think that the older we get, the more cautious we mm -hmm. are. And consequently, a little help from here and there, driving is fine. Right. Find that a number of People at a certain age decide, well, even though they don't want to, but mm -hmm. they have to give it up. Right. We, al we also have scheduled on Monday, March 10th, the AARP Smart Driving Program. And Peter Bossy will, is the instructor. It's a four-hour course, and he will be in uh, to, it's like a refresher course. Um, um, just kind of go over rules of the road and it's uh, well received and we've had it at our center many many times once a year to twice a year I offer this AARP course there is a charge for it um, it goes to AARP it's twenty dollars for non-members fifteen dollars for AARP members so if you're interested in that program uh, definitely give us a call and, and uh, we can sign you up and that is um, Monday, March 10th, from 12 to 4. Well, that's important, because the older we get, I say this for myself, the more cautious one gets, mm -hmm. but there are certain little entities involved that, gee, when I was young, I never did that, or I didn't do this, but as you get older, mm -hmm. you've got to be more cautious, you've got to be definitely more alert, and there's other entities that are so important in driving at a certain age. Right. You know, our whole um, at the Council on Aging, of course it is about aging gracefully with quality of life. And uh, I, I've noticed that we have uh, younger people, you know, the, the mid-50s, early 60s, coming into the center to see what's going on, participate in some of our programming. So I've decided to offer once a month, we're going to have a Wednesday evening seminar, sort of information about um, that pre-retirement group of people. And the first one um, is March 12th, and it's 6.30 to 8. And I have, uh, it will be a presentation on um, long-term care insurance and it will be given by New York Life and, and I want to stress that it is only an informational session only um, so you can learn a little bit about what New York Life offers in terms of long-term care care ins insurance so that it's um, it will not be allowed to be a, a, a sales pressure type of presentation it's only an informational session and I think it's uh, interesting to gather because uh, you know when you're the 55 60 that's really the time you want to be looking at long-term care insurance if you're interested in purchasing a policy premiums are less and uh, it's just I th in my opinion I think that's the time when you start to look for that because now the situation, and we've talked about this before, the baby boomers, mm -hmm. all right, when you get to 50, 55, uh, and you've worked hard, and, and you get your Social Security, and you get your little retirement, mm -hmm. but uh, prices today are a lot higher than they were yesterday. Right. And so consequently, it's better to protect yourself. and. Uh, Comments for life is something else. 
but situations to protect what you have, your assets, right. and the family yep. is very important. Yep. So that's our first um, scheduled talk on March 12th at 6.30 on long-term care insurance. And then in April, April we have uh, on the 16th, we have Ron Griffin, a shine counselor, and he comes in uh, and does this often for me. And he's going to talk about Medicare. When you're ap approaching age 65, you know, you have to sign up for Medicare and the A, B, C, D, and E's of Medicare. He gives a great presentation. So if you're, you know, 64, 63, 64, 64 and a half, and you know that 65 is going to be approaching real soon, you want to come to this talk and hear. Um, a, and learn a little bit about Medicare because it can be confusing. You know that. It is very yeah. much so. I find with talking with Ron, uh, in Medicare, you've got HMOs. Yeah. You get very, very confusing. And consequently to the elderly, it becomes a stack of paper and you get into one page and you think, gee, do I have to read all of this? Mm -hmm. So it's excellent to have Ron there to explain about Medicare, supplemental insurance yes. if possible, yep. all the little entities to protect you. Right, because up until that time when you're working, you know, you're, you're not really thinking about it. But <clears> as that <throat> age approaches, all of a sudden you have to kind of you know, start thinking about it. And when you look into it, it can be very confusing. So this is a good way to get the information that you need to begin to make a decision. Very important. Yeah. Well, yeah. let's go on. Sure. So we have another class. Uh, um, you know, everybody has their tablet and their Nook and, and Kindle. And so we've had a lot of requests for a class about how do we use this device? You know, I got it for Christmas, and how do I use this? So Judy Laurentos um, has started this technology class, and it's um, kind of a drop-in basis. You come in with your, your tablet, and y you sit around, and she helps people out one-on-one -on -one as a group, trying to figure out how to use your um, tablet, Nook, Kindle, whatever it may be. And uh, so we have two classes scheduled in March, and it's Monday, um, excuse me, it's, yeah, Monday, March 3rd at 1.30, and Wednesday, March 12th at 4 p.m. So if you received one of these for a birthday or Christmas or present um, and have some questions about it, definitely come in, and Judy will be glad to help you out as best she can. You know, I have said this more than once. In fact, both of us have. Council on the Aging, the center is yours. What Roberta has given us so far in dates, take advantage of these. And a lot of help. The older we get, we sometimes get a little confused as to certain entities to follow that yellow brick road. That's what the center is there for. To help you in many, many situations that may arise, you may not contemplate it now, but something does come up. That's why the center is there. All right. Um, and talking about that, uh, you know, I think about people as they retire and uh, have some free time on their hands and maybe want to try something that they've never done before. Um, we have an art class starting up on uh, March 5th. That's a Wednesday. Eleanor Holmes is the instructor, and she'll have an eight-week class um, on those Wednesdays from 9.30 to 11.30. And She's been with the Council on Aging teaching our classes for as long as I've been there. So I'm, I'm there almost 13 years, and so she's before me. So she's probably been the inst one of the instructors there for maybe 15 years or so. So she's very talented and skilled. And all you need to do is bring in a sketch pad and, and a, a pencil and, and you know come in and let her let you go to it. I mean, it's, it's a great class. You know, Roberta. She does a nice job. We have said, uh, when you get older and you retire, you think, well, what am I going to do now? Mm -hmm. 
because there's still a lot of energy in the old timers. <laughs> and uh, diverse the activities. Get yourself going into something. That's the most important thing. You're surprised what it can do. Art classes are excellent. Yeah, and other areas. Art classes are great. We have a program, and you're aware of it. We, um, it's an adult respite care program and uh, a respite program. So it's for uh, caregivers who are with someone, caring for someone, and it's an opportunity for the loved one to come in and be with dedicated staff where the caregiver gets some time off. It's a great program, runs Tuesdays and Thursdays from nine to three. But my point with the art is uh, Barbara McAuliffe, our Wednesday afternoon art instructor, will do art therapy with uh, our club participants. And it's just amazing what, um, uh, you know, a, a brush and some paint, what people can create, you know, having had no instruction in the past. It's just amazing to see what the work they do. That's important. You know, you, you spoke earlier about the classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Yeah. Where uh, they're home and it gives the opportunity of the individual, the missus or mister, whatever the mm -hmm. case may be, some time to themselves. Right. It eliminates a lot of stress, but it's important to the senior also. For I find that he or she that attends the Tuesdays and Thursdays, they sit with others. They feel at home with others. It's like getting to know you. And so they're not just alone, but they're with somebody or they're with a group of people. And then on the other side of the day, you find that the people have, that take a care of the senior has time for themselves. Mm -hmm. So it works twofold. And believe it or not, getting to know you, sitting down, and I've seen this because I have been there, it's excellent. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that it's, kind of it's a, a program. Very, it's a very successful program. Yeah, and so we do have openings if you know of someone who may benefit a caregiver who may benefit from time off, definitely give the center a call. Ask for Grace Nunziato, she's a program coordinator. So we do have, uh, again, um, availability. So um, just give us a call. It's, uh, it's interesting to see how just people engage with one another and the conversation and the uh, stimulation that's, that the program bring, brings to people. It's, it's an excellent program. Thank you. And to the individual that participates, they feel that they're not alone. They're with somebody. Then they're with a group of people. And consequently, I feel that it's so very important and to the individuals that are during the 24 hours a day, mm -hmm. seven days a week, it eliminates the stress and they can go out and do what they want to do. Right. I want to just say, though, I, I have acknowledged uh, Metro West Health Foundation in the past, but just want to say again how grateful I am to Metro West Health Foundation for funding this program. I'm ending my second year of funding with them and will be writing a grant for a third year for one of the positions, and I'm hoping that that um, is awarded um, to, to keep the program going. It's um, it's very important and it's a, a whole nother kind of element of what we do at the Council on Aging. So uh, for them, I'm very grateful to have at least started the program and hopefully it will be able to sustain itself. Well, you've done a remarkable job. Uh, as I said earlier, not being repetitious, I've been there, I've seen this. I've seen a number of other areas where a senior, is lonely, you're tired of watching television, and they feel like they're a burden. Well, eliminate the burden. A program of this nature can give you your Tuesdays and your Thursdays and give the people that are caring for you a little of their own time. There's quite a bit to it. 
Shall we go on? Sure, we have a few um, events planned. Uh, we have our annual St. Patrick's Day dinner on Saturday, March 15th, and two volunteers, um, participants at the center, Dave Oppenheim and Tony Filippelli, do our uh, food preparation. It's always delicious. And then we have Mel Simons, who's going to come and uh, perform for us uh, following dinner. So it should be a great evening. We are limited to 80 people, so if you, you're, you're hearing this and you want to um, attend, please give a call uh, as soon as you can and make sure we can get your name on the list. Um, then we have, of course, we have about every six to eight weeks we go to Foxwoods, which is just a fun day to get out of town and uh, inexpensive and, you know, enjoy the buffet lunch and maybe do a little uh, gambling. Um, so that's coming up on March 20th. The bus leaves our center at 8.30 and it's $24 a person. And then we can go on and we can talk about our April event, which, uh, of course, we already talked about the dance on April 5th. And then we have our yard sale. That's important. The yard sale. So this is our friends group biggest fundraiser of the year is the yard sale and it is scheduled for April 26th from 8 to 2 and um, the week before the yard sale we'll be looking for donations from community members uh, who may have done some spring cleaning and want to donate their items to us so then we can use them for the yard sale and the friends group can um, you know do some fundraising for the Council on Aging. You know that yard sale and I have been there mm -hmm. there's something else again no doubt um, you to our viewers a lot of you have been driving down and you've seen signs of yard sales and out mm -hmm. of houses well this one beats it all believe me uh, I've gone and there is a multitude of things for you to look at buy just it's astounding as to the number of items at your yard sale. I know, and that's, that's um, all the wonderful people who donate, who decide to box up their items and give it to us. For, and for that, we're just so grateful because that's the only way we could have the yard sale is to receive the donations like that. So we have so many people that come together to make this a success. We have the people who donate their items. We have the people who work the yard sale, who sort all the, the items that come in, clean the items, you know, put them on the tables in a nice orderly fashion. And then we have the wonderful people who come and shop and buy the items. So for all the, those people who help us out with this yard sale, it's, um, we say thank you and hope that this coming April 26, our yard sale is as successful as last year. I'm in Del Tills out of school. What I like is that area where they have the cakes and the cookies. <laughs> the bake sale is oh, huge. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, that is, uh, you know, if you can buy a home baked cake or pie or, you know, that's brownies. something else again. You know. Yeah, that's wonderful. You don't have to do it at home. No, plus the fact is it has that homey feel. It does. And, you know, most of the people who contribute those baked goods, those, and it's mostly ladies, the, those ladies are good bakers. So oh, you, you bet. So you know what you're getting is going to be delicious. One lady in particular, I walked them, she said, cookies, most definitely. Yes, you know? yeah, yeah. So that is a good part of the yard sale. Uh, what else do we have so going here? We're going on our fourth annual cruise to Bermuda, and that is May 23rd to the 30th. So we have... Um, 36 people going I believe and um, I can only I only have room for one more cabin because that's the size bus I've hired to get us into the uh, to, to the ship and back but uh, it should be fun we have a larger group going uh, this year and and I think that's great it'll be fun time and I hope the weather's perfect well I would certainly think so hope so now let's hope that at that time of the Bermuda when you go aboard that ship that it's not cold and windy. Better uh, not be. <laughs> I'll be very upset. Shall we go on? Yep, we have two other trips that are planned to this point, and we are going to uh, a day trip to Block Island, and that's on Thursday, June 26th. So if you're interested in that, 
definitely come down sign up we do ask that you you pay for those bigger trips when you sign up so there's a little bit of a commitment on your part um, and the next trip is um, Thursday July 24th we're going up to uh, Meredith New Hampshire to Lake Winnipesaukee and uh, doing a lunch and a, a Mount Washington uh, Lake Winnipesaukee cruise so that should be a fun a fun day also one very main question. Mm -hmm. Taxes. Yes, taxes. Ah. So we do have our AARP tax aid program going on as we speak. Uh, the volunteers are in on Wednesday mornings from 8.30 to 1. And you can call the center for an appointment. Um, and therefore, the simple uh, to moderate uh, tax preparation. Nothing, you know, too detailed. Just a 1040. Correct. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. And that, that's important. I mean, a lot of people say, well, gee, what are we going to do? Well, you got a tax man. All you have to do is call 508-359-3665 and make an appointment. See the tax man. Yep. Believe me, they uh, worry about it, but once it's finished and it's mailed, to sigh of relief. Yes. Uh, tax work off. Is there anything so, on that? Yeah, you know, we do have the tax work off program, and we've had that going for uh, many years, and we have uh, 65 positions on the program. And I just, there was some concern earlier about changes to the tax work off program for this year, but I just want to say that uh, the tax work off program remains the same as it has been in the past so there's no worries about that for this year so that is ongoing the uh, volunteer works in a town department and uh, so the volunteer gets a credit off their uh, real estate bill and the town department gets uh, extra hands to help out so it's a great program for everyone now that tax work off where do they sign up for that at the center or at the townhouse no they they would come to the senior center and it actually uh, we do a lottery because we only have 65 positions we usually have between 70 and 80 people apply so they come it, it's in November um, so in uh, November 1st the applications will be out at the center need to be back in by the 30th and the lottery is the first Wednesday in December so if you're turning 60 you're gonna be 60 um, you, you know you're eligible for the tax work off program so but I do want to say something in terms of that uh, just to remind people that there is a special town meeting on Monday March 10th um, and it is about the Medfield State Hospital property. Um, uh, should, should the town purchase, that will be really the, the, the vote there. And if you are interested in attending town meeting and you cannot get there, um, you need to just give uh, the center a call and I'll, I will be providing transportation to, to town meeting. You know, there's been a lot said. I've had the opportunity, Roberta, right here at the anchor desk, uh, talking with Richard DeSorga, Selectman, Bill Morrow, who done a tremendous amount of work relative to it. You've had a number of tours, and then you had a, a situation existing there at the center where there was a number of people discussing. Mm -hmm, they had the visioning, uh, yeah. Right. That is the 10th day of March. Make it a point. Voting is very, very important. I've stressed it so many times. And consequently, this is in dire need, and I say dire need, of your vote. Because it's so very, very important to the town of Medfield, and especially to you. Make that a point to be there at that special town meeting on the 10th day of March. Shall we recap what we have? Yeah, we can definitely do that, but I'm just gonna add one other thing in for what's planned in, the, uh, uh, in May. On Wednesday, May 7th, we will have our third annual art show. And, um, you know, 
the first one was well received. Last year it was even better. So I'm hoping that uh, more people will come out for our art show and showcase the talents of the participants that you know do go to art class, do go to quilting, do go to wood carving, um, and 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 come and view what what is done. You know, in paintings and so forth, one in particular, even though neighbor. Um, and she she paints now. I know, and she started in her not nineties. Yeah, she started she's painting. Ninety five, and, she, and she's painting. I hope she doesn't get mad that we you said that. <laughs> <laughs> well, but let's go over what we what we talked yep, about. Just a reminder that um, our Valentine dance has been rescheduled for a spring fling on April fifth, Saturday, April fifth, from seven to ten. So, a oh, one important thing on that: if you have your Valentine's Day tickets, just hold on to those. You'll use those to get into the uh, spring fling. Um, we have a couple of important uh, driving seminars coming up. We have March six. Michelle Ellis from the Registry of Motor Vehicles will be speaking after our breakfast, and Monday, March tenth, we have our AARP smart driving course from 12 to 4 um, and then of course we have the the uh, town meeting on March 10th that starts at 7:30. transportation is available just give me a call and then we have March 18th we have our ladies tea that has been rescheduled and March 15th Saturday March 15th we have to celebrate St. Patty's Day and we have our Irish dinner that evening so I think that's a good recap it is. You recapped it very, very well. One thing I'm going to want to slide in. I know we have, you have a number of exercises. How are those going? Exercises are great. It's it's uh, we have eleven exercise classes a week, uh, Mondays and Wednesdays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays. Every day is covered with exercise. So you really just need to go online, the center at medfield.com. Check out our website, and you can see the times and the different classes that we have. Uh, or you can come in and grab a newsletter. Or you can come in and have the newsletter mailed to your home if you like. Um, and we ask a $5 donation per year to have the newsletter mailed. But um, the exercise classes are great, and they seem to be uh, well received for sure. And um, so I just, you know, if you want to try a class, come in, try a class, and see if you like it. A newsletter, and I, I've held it up a number of times. It's very important to you. Information really, literally, abounds. Roberta and I can sit here and talk for about a half hour, but we can't cover as much as what's in that newsletter. Right. Take well, advantage of it. I was going to say, you know, I didn't even touch on the very front page. Is all about we have a singing group that uh, Candy Hopewell. Um, runs on Tuesdays at 12.30, and there's, she put together this uh, 11 reasons why you should sing, and it's on the front of the newsletter, and when you read those, you think, oh my gosh, I'm going to go sing on Tuesdays at 12.30 because it's so good for you, and it makes you feel good, and it expands your lungs, and increases your oxygenation, and well, you can read it on the newsletter, but uh, definitely that is something that we want to promote and get people in there for because singing does make you feel good. You know, as I sit here and we, we talk for about a half hour, do you realize what is available to you through the newsletter and what's available at the center? Many, many, many things. Roberta, I want to thank you. Oh, my pleasure. And here we are. It's cold and it's going to be that way for a while, but then spring will spring run. will be here, yep. And uh, yep. it'll warm up, and people I know will feel a lot better. Absolutely. But in the interim, take advantage of the center in many, many areas, because that center and the director of Council on the Aging, Roberta Lynch, is there for you. Once again, thank you. You're welcome. This is Jack Peterson wishing you and yours the very best. Good night.
This program was made possible through the generous support of your Medfield friends and neighbors, folks just like you. And thanks for watching.